The GoPro Hero 9 Black has just been released and there's no question it's an awesome camera. However, the Insta360 One R has also just had some big updates and is a serious competitor to the GoPro and dare I say better in many ways. So which action camera should you buy? Stay tuned to the end to see my full list of pros and cons of each. Now this video won't compare absolutely everything but I'll compare everything that's important that I can think of. And spoiler alert, it's really close. Here they are side by side and they're a very similar size apart from the fact that the one inch obviously has this giant Leica lens. And by giant, I mean it's giant compared to the small camera body, but it still fits easily in the palm of my hand. The Hero 9 is slightly taller. The 1R is a little bit wider and they're roughly the same thickness aside from the Leica lens. A great feature that both cameras have is that you can replace the lens. If you were to smash it, you can easily replace it by just screwing this off and screwing a new lens back on. They both have touch screens but there's no question the Hero 9 wins because it's got a screen on both sides and it's literally more than double the size of the 1R screen and so much easier to use. It's touch friendly and it actually makes viewing your media and changing your settings pretty easy to do without a phone. Whereas with the Insta360 it is really hard to use this touch screen because it's so small. You frequently struggle changing the settings and if you've got fat fingers don't even think about it. The screen on the GoPro is bigger and better than last time and this front facing screen is amazing. I love having this view when you're in selfie mode the screen is highly visible and this makes shooting far less time consuming so I'd say in terms of screens this is a big win for the Hero 9 Black. Now since the 1R 1 inch is modular you can reassemble it with the screen facing the front however this now means there's no back facing screen and when you turn it on it's blocked a little bit by the lens so it makes that small screen even smaller and if you're trying to change a setting in the top left or bottom left, it makes it really hard. So I don't really consider this touch screen to be very good and I don't ever use it when I'm using the One R. Instead, I just connect to my phone's app to avoid frustration. Both cameras have USB-C charging and use micro SD cards. A big area they do differ, however, is the battery. With the Hero 9, you need to open this latch to pull out the battery. Whereas with the One R, because the camera is modular, the battery's at the bottom meaning you can change it easily without having to open up any latches. You can replace it with this battery or replace it with a bigger, longer lasting battery. Whereas with the GoPro, you could only ever use a battery that size. And speaking of batteries, here's the difference between them. So if you bought the Insta360 boosted battery, you could get significantly longer shooting time than the GoPro battery or the standard Insta360 battery. Yes, it does make it marginally bigger, but it's still a pocket size camera and still Still roughly the size of the GoPro. Both cameras come with a GoPro mount and you obviously have the option to use the one quarter inch tripod thread adapter if you prefer using that. Although if you're using the regular red battery it ain't got nothing on the bottom so you have to use this annoying cage thing to get that thread back like so and this also has the advantage of having a hot shoe mount on it as well if you want to mount an external mic. However you can get those for the GoPro as well so this definitely is not a unique advantage of the One R. What is unique though is the ability to do this and this look at that it's now a 360 camera I know for sure the GoPro Hero 9 Black cannot do this to this point I've mostly used the 1R in 360 mode and this lens is incredible it allows you to shoot 5.7k 360 video and get some truly epic shots quickly and easily like this and this and this and this and this, and this. These are shots that are unique to 360 cameras or that 360 cameras make significantly easier. Whereas the GoPro simply can't do that because it's only shooting in one direction. So with the One R, because it's modular, you have the option to change it from a GoPro type action camera into a 360 camera and vice versa. And while this video is mostly going to compare the GoPro with the one inch version of the One R, this is something that simply can't be ignored. That the One R gives you so many options when trying to capture unique action shots. And that's purely from the fact that you can rebuild it as a 360 camera. So while I'd say the GoPro definitely wins when it comes to design because it just feels a bit more rugged and because it's just one camera with no add-ons it feels sturdier but for the fact that the 1R can be rebuilt in so many different ways I think when it comes to design these cameras are about even.
Okay, now let's shoot. My first stop is Sydney's Queen Victoria building. Here I put the two cameras side by side to capture this giant Christmas tree and straight away they look pretty similar, dare I say identical. They both have those nice vivid colour profiles and this shot is smooth and really satisfying to look at. When we look up at the ceiling and pan across, I'm starting to notice some differences. The GoPro is a bit noisier than the One R, and the One R seems to be handling highlights a lot better than the GoPro. Now you'll notice that I shot at 5.3K 30fps with the One R, and 5K 25fps with the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Sounds unfair, right? Well, I actually had no choice but to do this, and the reason is because of the flickering caused by shooting at 30 FPS with the GoPro Hero 9. This has been a common issue with GoPro cameras. When you change the camera settings from PAL to NTSC, often it's not able to handle indoor fluorescent lights. It produces this ugly flickering, and I've found this to happen in almost every indoor situation with lights that I've come across. And while I do offer the solution of changing from NTSC to PAL, the unfortunate thing about that is you're also changing all of the frame rates on the box. So no longer is it 5K 30 and 240 FPS at 1080, but it goes down to 200 when you switch from NTSC to PAL. This isn't an issue outdoors, but when you're indoors and you've got any kind of fluorescent lighting, you're going to have to change it from NTSC to PAL, and therefore you're losing a couple of frames depending on the setting you're using. With the One R, it's got anti-flicker built into it, so all of the resolutions and frame rates on the box stay exactly the same whether you're indoors or outdoors. Now here's a time warp I made with the GoPro, and this looks pretty cool. It's a moving hyperlapse. I was able to set this within the camera. I just pressed record and did a lap around the top level of the building and yeah that looks pretty cool didn't need to bring it to my computer or anything so that result was pretty good however here is a hyperlapse with the insta 360 one r and i think you'll agree that looks way cooler firstly i was able to shoot at a much higher resolution than time warp and secondly you can add that cool motion blur effect that makes those moving time lapses extra cool and no doubt worth the extra workflow of having to edit it. Unfortunately, you can't do this all in the camera. You have to connect the camera to your phone, change the speed, add the motion blur effect, and then export. So it's a longer workflow for a better result. By the way, both cameras give you a couple of options for your field of view. You can shoot in wide, linear, and narrow, and that's definitely a great feature of both of them depending on the situation you're in. Sometimes you need wide sometimes you need narrow however with the GoPro you have to choose it while you're shooting and you can't change it later with the one R you shoot and you can change the field of view later on retaining maximum image quality so if you shot something in narrow and it was accidental you've got the option later to change it back to wide and the quality is still 5.3k okay this is a voice control test both cameras respond to two different things here is this one and here is this one now let's see how long it takes for them to respond GoPro, capture. And it's rolling. Start recording. Start recording. Okay, so it didn't get it the first time. The second time when I was louder and clearer, the one R actually recorded pretty quickly. Okay, this is a sound test. Can you hear me? One, two, three. I'm here at the Queen Victoria building. Okay, this is a sound test. Can you hear me? One, two, three. I'm here at the Queen Victoria building. Okay, this is a sound test. Can you hear me? One, two, three. I'm here at the Queen Victoria building. Next, I tested out slow motion between the two cameras and the GoPro has the clear advantage here because it can shoot 240 FPS, whereas the One R one inch can only shoot 120 FPS. So here I am sacrificing my dignity in public for the sake of a camera test. And I think we can both agree that the GoPro footage looks better because it's 240 FPS. Obviously, it's gonna be smoother. If you look at the tram behind me, that really makes it crystal clear. It's better at 240 FPS with the GoPro. I will also add with the One R, it's got the freeze frame effect. I made a video about it, but essentially what it is, is Twixdoor inbuilt into their software. So you can do cool effects like this and slow the action down like 10 times. And yes, it is interpolated. It's not always perfect, but it is cool for action type shots. I've got a video about that, which is the one before this one on my channel. 
My next stop is the tallest building in Sydney, Sydney Tower. And I knew this would be a good opportunity to test out the 5.3K and 5K side by side to see how they look when zoomed in. Here's my first shot and from this perspective, they look almost identical. There's almost no difference between 5K and 5.3K. They both look great. So no doubt shooting at that really big resolution helps in situations like this where you've got a lot of detail in your frame. When I zoom in, they look really similar as well. In fact, you might even say the GoPro looks slightly better because naturally the footage has more contrast and that helps you define details in your scene better than the 1R sometimes. It is also a bit grainier. So when zoomed in to 400% like this, I'd say they're probably about even. By the way, no color correction has been done to any of the footage you're seeing in this video. Here's the view of high Park in Sydney CBD and yeah this is a great shot lots of detail in both both of them have really nice vivid color profiles which is great those greens look really green and this footage is really satisfying to look at I'd be happy using either of these cameras for wide shot perspectives like this zooming in again to the fountain and hmm, they're pretty similar again I'd say the contrast of the GoPro maybe helps it look a little bit sharper, but you can add that to the one R in color correction later. But yeah, both pretty good. Here's another one. And yeah, again, they look quite similar. I would point out that the clouds up the top are more defined with the one R. You can see a lot more depth there and the dynamic range is better overall. Whereas with the GoPro, those highlights are missing a little bit of detail. Here's a close up of a boat and go little man, go. Yeah. Not seeing much difference here. Here's a scene where they do stand out. I've got them side by side set up at the top of Sydney Tower. And there's no question the dynamic range is way better on the right than the left. The 1R really is better for dynamic range. And I've noticed this in high contrast lighting. Not only is it able to expose the exterior, but it does a great job at exposing the interior and showing those details on my face. And this is definitely helped by the fact that the 1R has an inbuilt one inch sensor, whereas the GoPro doesn't. Therefore, it's able to handle mixed lighting and shadows a lot better. Now, this begs the question of whether you actually need 5K or not. The answer is, well, not really, but it helps get that extra level of detail if you want to zoom in a little bit or if you want to export it 4K, it provides slightly better image quality when you bring it down to 4K. It's definitely not essential. So if you want to shoot at HD or 4K, then go for it. I know for me personally, I like shooting with as much resolution as I can possibly get all the time. And I've got the computer that is able to handle that. So if you don't have a fast computer or a fast phone, I wouldn't advise shooting at 5K or 5.3K. My final stop of the day is in Sydney's Hyde Park. And for that one dude in the comments, no, I don't live in London. Now, of course, we had to include a stabilization test as part of this video. While I'm not into extreme sports myself, I do know how to act like a crazy person and shake the camera around violently. So I did exactly that right here at the fountain and I'm seeing a massive difference between these two cameras. It actually surprised me a lot how well the Hero 9 Black performed at stabilization. The 1R is doing a good job, but even after applying flow state stabilization in the Insta360 Studio desktop app, it still was nowhere near the level of the GoPro. And this running test confirms that again, that Horizon is all over the place with the 1R and with the GoPro, it's almost dead level. I don't know how they do that, but it's awesome. GoPro wins. With the GoPro, I think we can agree it's got better stabilization than the one inch. However, I did forget to mention that when you use the 360 mod, it changes things completely because it's shooting a 360 degree field of view. The stabilization is basically perfect and you don't get any of the wobble I got with the one inch, but you also do take a bit of a hit in quality. Now I wanted to test the 5K, 4K and slow motion side by sides again with this water fountain. And both cameras produce footage that looks really good. I can't complain about either of these. But what I would say though, is that again, the dynamic range of the 1R is better here. You can see those details in the clouds are much clearer on the right hand side than the left. Also the GoPro tends to show up a little bit darker straight out of the camera. Here they are at 4K 60 and I've slowed this down by 50% and I'd actually say the 1R looks better. Here they are at 120 FPS versus 120 FPS. And again, both good, about even. And I'd probably give it to the GoPro. GoPro wins overall for slow motion. This is sound test number two. I have a noisy water fountain behind me and people all around me. And yeah, 
it's pretty noisy. So can you hear me? One, two, three. This is sound test number two. I have a noisy water fountain behind me, I have people all around me, and yeah, it's pretty noisy. So can you hear me? One, two, three. Both cameras are waterproof. The Hero 9 is waterproof to 33 feet. The 1R is only 16 feet. And here I attempted a cool slow motion shot, dipping the cameras into the fountain. And yeah, those bubbles look really nice on both cameras. They definitely look better with the GoPro and combine that with superior slow motion. And I'm going to give it to the GoPro for use in the water. I will mention though that part of the big updates that the 1R has just received, one of them is called AquaVision, which would be especially handy for use in the ocean. You know when your footage turns out super blue? Well, it kind of neutralizes that. I found when shooting with both cameras that the Insta360 allows me to change more settings internally, things like the shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance. If you're an advanced shooter and you like shooting manually, then this is definitely going to be the camera that gives you more options. The GoPro has basic options, but a lot of them are limited to certain modes of the camera and you don't always know which mode you have to go into to get those settings. Whereas with the One R, you can always access them both for photos and videos. Oh, by the way, I've got one more side by side here. They are at nighttime in low light and there's no question in my eyes, the Insta360 One R is doing a better job here. Not only is it sharper, but there's much less noise. And again, this is something that the one inch sensor helps achieve. And this applies for both photos and videos. You're going to get a lot less noise in low light and mixed lighting. Whereas during the day, they're a lot closer. So you need to ask yourself, am I shooting solely during the day? If so, the GoPro is definitely going to do a great job. If you're someone that shoots in mixed lighting, maybe you shoot inside, maybe you use action cameras for travel and sightseeing when you're going in and out of buildings a lot. That's when the One R is going to shine, as well as obviously doing a very similar job during the day. Now I wanna to touch on photos really quickly. While I wouldn't really recommend using cameras like this for photography, if this is something that you see yourself doing, if you're in action type situations and you don't always have your phone readily available, this is something that will be important to you. So I put the cameras side by side in daylight, in mixed lighting and at night time. And I got very similar results to when I was shooting video. Check out this mixed lighting shot. Here's the before side by side and here's the after, after color correcting the raw shots from each of these cameras. This isn't even close. The One R dominates the GoPro when it comes to photos, especially in tricky lighting like this. This shot was taken here in my office and the lighting is always super contrasty and I actually tried to make it really hard for both cameras to expose my face properly by having the main light source behind me and yeah, I was able to recover almost all of the shadows with the One R raw, whereas I wasn't able to with the GoPro Something that helped me get such a good result with the One R is using their new feature, which is called Pure Shot, which is essentially an automated HDR where you put in all of the HDR settings, it shoots nine bracketed raw shots, combines them together in the camera, and spits out one singular bracketed HDR raw shot that you can then color correct. And I was able to color correct this shot in Adobe Camera Raw in around 30 seconds. And yes, I did try every photo setting of the GoPro, including inbuilt HDR like this shot here. And from my experience, Raw delivered the best result. Outside though, in full sunlight, they're similar enough. Now both cameras have an excellent mobile workflow. They're so user friendly and easy to pick up. They make connecting, downloading your footage and editing and then exporting a breeze. And I can't really fault either of them. If you choose to use the One R in 360 mode, it also has the added benefit of having Shot Lab, which is essentially a library of pre-made effects where all you do is plug in your footage and it applies the effects instantly. Then you can export to your camera roll and upload to social media in minutes. Some of these effects are ridiculously cool and the workflow is also extremely fast. So I would say that the Insta360 app has the benefit of many more options if you're using it as a 360 camera as well as a flat action camera. As for the desktop workflow, with the GoPro you literally put your SD card into your camera and you can access your file straight away. You don't have to do anything. Whereas with the One R you will need to process your video files in Insta360 Studio to apply effects like stabilization, like the hyper lapse and so on 
it's not done in the camera. It has to be done either in the app or in the desktop software. Whereas with the GoPro, it applies effects like stabilization in the camera and you don't have to do anything. Therefore, the One R has a longer mobile workflow. Sometimes it's more beneficial if you're doing cool effects like the hyperlapse. Sometimes it's less beneficial if you just want to apply basic stabilization to your shots. And again, you will need a pretty fast computer when applying effects to 5.3K video footage, especially if you've got a lot, there's going to be a bit of rendering time involved. In fact, I'd even say it's just faster doing it on your phone. So I wouldn't necessarily bother with the desktop workflow, unless that's what you prefer. And if so, that's fine. You can export from both cameras into MP4 format. So the One R wins for mobile workflow, the GoPro wins for desktop workflow. Hmm, what else? Both of them have a big range of accessories that you can buy to mount them in millions of different ways. Both can live stream in 1080p. With the GoPro, you're obviously using this lens, the one and only lens. With the One R, you have to use the 4K or the 360 lens to do that. But this also has the benefit of shooting in two different ways. The first one is you can live stream in 360 with the 360 build, and you can live stream with the 360 video reframed. So if you want the tiny planet effect, or if you wanna move the frame around, even into a normal perspective like a normal webcam would do, you can do that. Speaking of webcams, both cameras can also be used as a webcam. Again, with the One R, you have to use either the 360 mod or the 4K mod to do that. And with the 4K mod, it's able to track you as you move around. Okay, now for the number one factor for most people, and that is the price. The One R is more expensive than the GoPro. With the GoPro, if you subscribe to their subscription service, you get $100 off, but it's also $100 to do it, so it kind of evens itself out. With the One R, occasionally they put it on sale and that brings it down closer to the price of the GoPro. But one big factor here is that with the One R, you're not just buying the one inch mod, you're buying three cameras in one. You get the one inch, you get the 4K mod, which I don't really rate by the way, which is why I haven't mentioned it much in this video, but you also get the 360 mod and the 360 mod is the one I've been using using the vast majority of the time when shooting with my Insta360 One R. So while I wouldn't really call it three cameras in one because these two lenses are more or less the same, the one inch is just a better version of the 4K mod, I would say that it's two cameras in one. It's an action camera with a Leica lens and a fantastic one inch sensor and it's a 360 camera that can achieve hundreds of cool effects that can also be used in action type situations. And when you buy the One R one inch, you also get this for free. So it really is two cameras in one. But if you're not interested in 360, then this may not be appealing to you. I would say though, just give it a chance. Check out some of the videos on my channel because I talk about 360 a lot. I really think it's very cool and innovative and can enhance what cameras like this can already do. And GoPro are clearly acknowledging that when they brought out the Max last year as their second 360 camera. And who knows, they could release another Max this year or next year, but clearly 360 is helping us capture better content from action type cameras. So I definitely do see it as a value add. So is this worth it for the price? Yes. Is this worth it for the price? Yes. Which one you choose would depend on what's most important to you. So if you've decided not to shoot 360 and it's either this or this, then the GoPro has better stabilization. Right now it's got better slow motion and better sound quality. There's no question the two screens are better and this makes it much easier to use without a phone. It's also got a faster workflow for basic stabilized action shots due to doing everything in camera. The One R one inch in my opinion has better photo and video quality and much better dynamic range than the GoPro. So if you're someone that obsesses over quality, I just think you're going to get a more consistently good result with the One R. It's also better for cool effects like hyperlapses and all of those cool effects that 360 cameras allow you to do. There are hundreds of them. And if you're someone that likes experimenting, creating quirky content, that is unlike traditional content you would normally shoot with a camera like this. If you're all about innovation and creating unique stuff, then a camera that also doubles as a 360 camera will give you such a big range of options for types of content you can make. Whereas with the GoPro, you're always going to be limited to just that one perspective where you can only achieve a certain amount of things. If you want to learn more about the One R and what it can do, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel because I've got some pretty in-depth videos that explore all the cool effects, the workflows, the pros, the cons, and every Thing. And yeah, hit that subscribe button for more coming in the future. And I'm curious, which of these two cameras was your pick and why? Let me know down there. And that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful.